Hey there and thank you for joining me on the Retro Game Couch and in today's video we're going to take a look at... Hold on. Oh my word. <sighs> this 10 kilogram weighing beast, the Philips P2000C. This came out in 1983, runs on two Z80A processors running at 4 gigahertz. <laughs> <laughs> they wish. It runs on two Z80A processors running at 4 megahertz. It has two five and a quarter inch floppy drives. It runs on CPM, not MS-DOS. It has a built-in nine inch CRT, a monochrome CRT, 64 kilobytes of memory, 32 kilobytes of video memory. All in all, a great piece of Dutch computer history. A few days ago, I was trying to play a game on it. It seemed to work fine then, when all of a sudden it gave off the white smoke, the magic white smoke. The CRT was still on and the computer was seemingly still running. So I was really wondering what gave way. Well, a capacitor obviously, but in which part of the system because it was still running. So I turned it off. I haven't touched it since. And in this video, we're gonna see if we can fix this computer give it a good clean, check it out, see what it can do, and then of course play a game on it because we are the Retro Game Couch. So, let's go. Before we take a closer look at the system, let's first open it up and see what the damage is and if we can fix it. Really crappy keyboard, but I love the aesthetic. I'm guessing the bottom is a good place to start. I see arrows pointing towards these four screws. So let's start by removing these four. The entire top part comes off. That's very serviceable if this is indeed how you take it apart. Oh, that is amazing. Looking on the inside, here are the two 640 kilobyte drives. This is the P2012 model, so this has the two biggest drives. Other models have either one drive or two 160 kilobyte drives. On the back here is what is called the terminal board, and this drives the CRT, reads the keyboard input and does the beeper. Then here is the nine inch CRT with the power board here on the left with the flyback transformer and then here is what is called in the manual the distribution board. But the part we are interested in is actually this. This is the power supply and this is where the magic smoke came from. So we're gonna look here first. I think the next part is removing this big bracket. Comes apart so easily. We can remove this side panel as well. With the side panel completely removed, we should be able to remove the power supply. So looking at the power supply, at first glance, nothing seems to be wrong. But if you look a bit closer at this, I think this is called a Reva cap. And you can see that it has completely exploded on itself. There's one here, there's another one here, and I thought I saw one here. So let's replace these and uh, see if that fixes our problem. This power supply PCB was probably made by Philips. You know who also makes PCBs? That's right, PCBWay. They offer tons of customizations when ordering your PCB and shipping is fast. And currently they're celebrating their 10th anniversary in which they offer great discounts and do fun giveaways. So be sure to check out PCBWay. The parts to repair the power supply finally arrived. So let's repair the power supply, put it back into the machine, give it a good clean and then check it out together.
the fixed power supply is back in the machine. The machine is all clean now. I should have tested it before cleaning it, of course, but I'm pretty confident that fixing the power supply will fix the issues with this machine. So let's just turn it on. Hit, there we go. And if anything appears on the screen, we're golden. And there we go, fixed. Nothing is exploding or giving off any white smoke. Looking at the back of the computer, here's a connection for an external disk drive. This is the connection for an external hard drive. It uses the SASI standard. Do I pronounce it SASI? <laughs> I don't know. This one says external terminal, but it's not populated nor mentioned in the manual. This is an external monitor connector. This is a serial port and this is the parallel port. And then here is an expansion port. You need to remove this bracket and then there is a big expansion port inside. And the available extensions were either memory or an 8088 power board, which gave this computer MS-DOS capabilities. It would be pretty cool to find one of these cards. And then here is a little latch behind which is the cable for the keyboard. Here's the power socket. And this is also where more information about the computer is printed. Here's the keyboard connector. And this button releases this carrying strap. It's a pretty cool mechanism. This carrying handle comes free when I press this button, but this is also what keeps the keyboard inside of the computer with this little latch. We'll be checking out these five discs. I, I don't remember if I bought these or if these were donated, but they are being sold by Recompute33 shop on eBay. And this contains system files, games, more games, some office programs, and then even a word editor. So let's check these out. The first disc is a system disc. And these are commands that we can use. And it also has some built-in commands. I don't know much about CPM. I'm an MS-DOS guy. If, for example, in MS-DOS, I wanted to copy add.com to add.buck, for example, I would do... But copy is not a valid command in CPM. And when you input an invalid command, it just echoes the command to you with a question mark. So if Elmar, it just says... Elmar, question mark. Copying actually is done with the pip command. So pip. And now if we do, yeah, now we have an add.com and an add.buck. Deleting a file in DOS would be delete, not on CPM. No, we have to use the erase command. So error, and now it's gone and we just have add.com again. We're not gonna do a deep dive into CPM, but I just want to point out, I am not an expert in CPM. This is the first time for me using it, so be gentle. If I do anything wrong, please let me know in the comments below. Let's check out disk number two. And I noticed that if we do a reboot, then for some reason, it will show the contents of the disk on this line. Perhaps this is the label of the disk. As you can see, I figured out how to do these startup lines. There's a command on the system disk called config. Inside the config file, we choose English and then we press one for system configuration. And here we can configure the system. So the disk is set to P2012 and that is the correct computer. And then keyboard is set to UKNL. Video is set to UKNL. Printer set to ASCII, parallel speed and the serial speed are set to 9600. And now if we press enter, it will ask us, do we want caps lock or not? I'm gonna say no, I'm gonna say one. Then here's the auto start string. So let's do CPM system disk and then welcome back retro game couch. And then write it to disk one. And then if we do a reboot. Welcome back Retro Game Couch CPM system disk. So let's check out chess first. I'm sorry, not chess, it's Super Chess 2000. Back from the day when putting the word 2000 in the name of anything made it sound more futuristic. Telecom Labor Vienna Austria, not Australia. 
It's pretty weird that it's using something to print all these lines and then do a break, which is visible. And these are sprites, E7 to E6. But yeah, this works. You can totally play chess against a computer and it's using sprites, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, chess, let's move on to the next game. And the next game seems to be ladder. Play. And where are we? Ah, the bottom. Right, space to jump. Oh. Oh, we're stuck in a hole. Oh, we're free. Let's try to beat the first level. We should be able to do that, right? Oh, frick. <laughs> That's a big gap. Yep. Yep. Nice. <laughs> Ladder is pretty intense. I like this. It reminds me of Load Runner, a text version of Load Runner. On to the next one. The next one is called Maze. Oh, directional keys. How can I interact? Can I type? Pull lever, lever. Oh, now the door is open. I want to read the notice. Read notice. No trespassing. Uh, can I just go north? I can. Oh, this is so cool. It said clang. So the door behind me closed, right? Yep. Ah, right. Open door. Read notice. Monsters at large. <laughs> yeah, I really like this. This is a very cool game. I'm gonna play some more of this, but not on camera. So let's go on to the next game. Next up is Snake. Snake question mark. Is Snake not on the disc? Um, Snake.bus. Is there something that can interpret the bass file? M basic. Um, M basic. Can I just load something? Snake dot bus. Syntax error. No, this is this just basic. How do you break out of something? I can do start stop, but how do I actually break out of something? Can we use M basic and give it snake as a parameter? 1977, 1982 by Microsoft. And this works. Whoops. There we go. Advent. Sounds like a text adventure. You're standing at the end of a road before a small brick building. Around you is a forest. A small stream flows out of the building and down a gully. Enter building. You are inside a building, a well house for a large spring. There are some keys on the ground. I don't know who's the owner, but I'm just gonna nick everything. Uh, take bottle. Leave house. I have a feeling I've played this before. I think on a Commodore 64, but I'm not sure. Maybe this is a very popular adventure I'm not picking up on, but um, yeah, text adventure. Let's try out the next game. If you're wondering, by the way, why I'm struggling with certain commands, I have to turn off the lights to get the screen to be visible. So the keyboard is hardly readable. And this is a computer screen. And this is the, the cat that has been nagging <laughs> for more food. So, yeah. The last game is called Forests. That sounds like a text adventure as well. If it is, then we're gonna skip it and go to the next game. This looks like a text-based dungeon crawler. It looks really, really cool actually. So I'll check this out later, but uh, let's go on to the next game. Let's try disc three. Oh, demo. Let's try the demo. Look at that. Maybe when it was in storefronts, this demo would run on it. Yeah, you can do some spreadsheets. 
Look at that. This is a business machine for sure. Well, it did have WordStar, which was a popular text editor back then. And that made this a serious business machine. All right, enough of the demo. <laughs> Let's go to the next program on this disc. So here we have Pac-Man, a totally legit text version of Pac-Man. Why, why is it, are, are we done? We're done. This should be the word processor, the killing app for CPM. Ooh, there is a Dutch word here. Maybe it has some documents that we can check out. WS, right? WordStar, it has to be it. MicroPro WordStar. It works! Oh, look at this! In een verkoop twee dan spullen. Schuhbakken. I have no idea what this is, but this seems to be a list of things that they are selling. That's a Dutch first name. Hello, here's a text from Allard. Well, hello, Allard. <laughs> ah, that's so cool. I love stuff like this. Let's try Weekend. Yeah, this is straight up a lot of doctor's practices and when they are opened and when they are closed. But this is very, very old information. Let's uh, try one more file. So what haven't we checked? Kleintje. You know what? Maybe this was used by a newspaper because this is again talking about stuff that is for sale. Combine that with the phone number list and list of locations of these doctor practices. Yeah, you can buy a camera, a Practica, MTL5, 150 guilders. <laughs> this was a closer look at this luggable computer from Philips, the P2000C, a 10 kilogram computer that is portable. These were my first little steps in CPM. I probably forgot some things, did some things wrong. Please let me know in the comments below things I should do, check out. So for now, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Most of you watching are not subscribed. Maybe become a patron. And for now, I hope to see you next time on the Retro Game Couch.